So I guess my video cut out. <laughs> and it's now the 15th of June. So, Petey, the roommate, wouldn't let the issue go. Worked us all up. Turned it into about his issues when I tried to distract enough times that it ends up being ends up being more dramatic again after me and Scott had made up. Sorry about this. It's been two hours since my thing cut out and I went to go have a smoke or find a smoke and met up with a guy who thought I was cute and I invited him here. And um, he would not drop the sex issue. So, I didn't, but I might. I'll probably just give that a hard no and be like, sorry, thanks for the cigarettes, bye. So I'm kind of stress eating. Um, I was hungry anyway. Um... It must be cute, right? Like, that's what it's gotta be. As even most of the dumb ones want me. The smart ones at least look. And then they hear me speak. <laughs> About something relevant. So. <sighs> Scotty. Right, um, so it got violent. I'm just gonna warn everybody now, it got violent. If you don't have the uh, capacity to not get just angry at him or angry about that kind of thing, might as well just leave now. I don't wanna hear it. I just wanna say it. Because it brings up other issues that are important. Um, this is still the vlog, so. Um. Petey wouldn't drop it. He started saying things. You got him worked up. Scotty worked up. And, uh, dramatic, unevolved, drunk Virgos. I'm into astrology, so it kind of seems to matter a bit. Hence the other <laughs> adjectives. Sorry if this is annoying, but I'm not going to stop until it's done. So he cornered me again, Scotty, and here's this idiot who got my boyfriend drunk. Well, helped him drink at least. I don't know what happened in there, but Scotty made the brilliant decision to drink, so. He's behind him. Scotty out violent first though. He flipped the table. While talking to Petey. And I'm like, what did you do that for? And I'm like, alright, whatever. I'll just walk away now. 
And then he cornered me and started talking. You know, it was done. Started talking about it and stuff. It was weird. It was weird about things. And, uh, to all of this anymore. It's kind of a bl blase thing, but Petey was behind him telling me to slap him. And I gave him this pointed look, looking around him, I try to reason with Scotty. I should have just told Petey to get out, I mean, if I wanted to salvage that, but I'm kind of glad it escalated for at least the point of finality. Uh, I don't know which way I'd have it. It could have gone either way. I'm kind of impartial impartial to the, to either way it could have gone. <sighs> Couldn't reason with him, so I stopped. I grabbed my cigarettes and went. I got PD out. He came back after a while, but I went out to meet him and I asked him for my cigarettes. And he said he didn't take his, my cigarettes as he's passing me. And he smelled like cigarettes, so I'm like, yeah, that's why you smell like them. Oh, good, 30 seconds later, oh yeah, I bummed one, whatever. Stupid stuff. Just amounts to my amount of tension, which... I'd already been considering heading out. I'd already sort of prepared myself for the worst looped all my stuff together. I'd already smashed a glass because I was pissed off at that point. There had already there was already broken glass from drunkenness anyway, so it didn't really matter. But I did, I just fucking whacked something. Cleaned it up before I got there. So on and so forth. Stupid details, things that stand out. Um I can't remember now how it got to that point, but I know I said a few things. I know it got stupid again. God, I wish I could remember. It's important. What's weird is I blocked out what happened next while I was calling 911 and talking to police. When the police finally showed up. But he dragged me, he grabbed my hair. Uh, you know what, I hit him. I think I hit him. No, he, he'd already done this, though. And then I hit him. Not once, not twice, but three times. After he'd... After the argument escalated to the point that he had my his hand all on my throat. And went to reach for another one, and I just went, done. And I, he grabbed me by the hair. And dragged me across the floor, saying, get out of my house, bitch, get out of my house, bitch, this, that, and the other thing. I don't know about the arguments. I thought that was done, but I guess it wasn't. can't remember all the things that were said. Doesn't matter. It's over with. It's five days, I think, now, since it's been over with. I can't encapsulate the two weeks of a relationship. Intense. You know, the subject matters. The connection. I could find him. I knew when he was or wasn't okay. There was this time he didn't show up. I didn't come home fast enough, and I started kicking and punching things right around the time he was getting jumped. And the second time he came home way later, I knew he was okay, and I was not with the fact that he just went out and never came, you know, and it took too long to come back. He wasn't there when I came back from work earlier. That was the time he was fine, and he 
we went out and didn't come back, and that's the time we got jumped. That's really annoying. Whatever. It was only two weeks. But when you dragged me across the floor the first time, I had flashbacks to my past. I didn't really fight back, and I don't think I hit him too much. I think I hit him like once or maybe twice. I know I hit him more the second time. I was on the floor catatonic getting my stuff together after I finally convinced him, screaming, you know, go in your room and I'll get out. I finally got on my fucking feet and I, whatever. I don't feel bad for me. I don't fucking understand. I don't understand, and I know that was my part in it, but I don't understand any of it. I don't understand somebody who is inherently... I don't understand where it came from, but I don't understand... I don't understand the people who just keep going with it. I have that in me. And I never... kept going with it. You know, it took something as bad as cancer to stop him from being violent on a chronic basis. And he still craves it. And I don't understand that. I had the tendency and I just didn't. <sighs> so... Second time, I called somebody in that little gap, and then when I started to say that I was nothing, you know, after kind of sort of explaining things that happened, so I just needed to talk about it. In that moment, I'm looking at around going, I have to leave again, I have to leave something. It was just a something. We'll just leave at what we were as a something. It's too fast. I'm looking around at my possessions going, I have to do this again. I have to leave shit behind because of somebody else again. It's not on my terms. It's not, you know, I was supposed to be more secure here, not less than, than this place. You know, all encapsulated into general feelings of a few words and a sense of direction and a prediction for the future. None of it was fair. So, she's, I was at a point of coming into the conversation crying. I heard him hit something in there listening to me. And I'm at a point where I'm saying, I'm nothing. And she's had her own drama, but she she says, Oh, Jess, don't, don't say that. And it just sounds so wrong. So not enough. So not passionate enough. So not meant. So fake. And I know it's not. But it just sounded so much so when I'm in... I was catatonic and it snapped me out. So really it was a good thing. But it snapped me out and I went... And shut it. And fixated on I'm nothing. That way it's easier. It's easier to take. If I... I know in that moment I'm worth something. But the way I've built my character, the way I've built myself, the way I've defined myself is such that that worth something means something to me. It means something in the greater span of things, which I don't get credit for. It's not supposed to mean anything. And I mean something to those who care. And in that moment, he didn't care. And if he did, fuck him. And she cared enough to say something like that and I care about what I want so if I am nothing if I am air everybody needs me 
and it doesn't, it, it's kind of comparing it to air. I didn't think of air, but it, it, it's as simple as that, air. It's nothing. We think of it so blasé, it's so expected. And I expect myself to be someone important. And it's not about the credit. It's not about what I deserve. I am in charge of that. So it was just a full on, I can do this. I can get where I need to get. I need to do this, this, and this. So I gathered more of my shit together. I put it all on a fucking thing. And then I thought back to him hitting the door and I went, wham, with my foot. Fuck it, I'm nothing, you hear me? And then, you know, he starts yelling and I don't even think about what he's hear saying. I don't, I don't hear it. I'm just like, hey, you can hit the door, so, so can I. And because I've already accepted this, because I'm pissed off again about how it happened, it's like it clicked so sad. It wasn't eloquent the way I handled it after that, but that's what happened the second time. In that order, I'm nothing, and I'm the one responsible for me. But unfortunately, you know, my reaction was, you get to do this. This is when all the anger comes up. You get to do this. You get to make me feel this small. You get to be aggressive and back me up into walls before I'm even at the point of you get to be violent, so fuck it. So I hit the door a few more times and that's when he came out. But I wasn't playing the defensive anymore. I wasn't reasoning with him. If he can reasonably understand my feelings, but he won't register anything I'm saying because he's got to be right. Then fine. I will use a few words to define where I'm at. And the second he tried to back me up into a corner, I hit him. And hard. Knowing you're nothing means you're f not afraid. It means, at least in that moment, that's how I felt, not afraid. Bring it. Then he grabbed my hair and I brought him down with me. And click. He, he's been pulling my hair. He's been dragging me across the floor like an animal. He won't hit me in the face when I ask him to do. His friend will, but he won't. But he'll drag me across the floor. That hurt. All right. <laughs> so I kicked him in the balls and I kicked him in the stomach and I punched him in the face. And he tried, oh, he tried to do the sec same thing again, but he tried to shove me away, I think. You know, he did. He tried to do the throat thing. <laughs> no. no, that one's a bad one. You're either going to be affectionate or you're going to be aggressive. It doesn't matter if it's defense or not. He started it. It was aggressive. It's not done. So I kept kicking. Got him. Got up. He's on the ground. I'm pissed. And this is the only thing that I regret. I'd already kicked him in the balls enough times. I'd already gotten him on the ground. I didn't have to kick him in the head. It wasn't hard. I hesitated. Doesn't matter. It's the only part of that that I feel bad for. So that's what happened. That's how I got kicked out of my safety place. That's how I made another mistake with the relationship and how it ended. He comes home after telling a black person who asked for a cigarette to fuck off. That was his reaction, according to him. Comes home with a goose egg. Well, you know, this much off of his face. And I heal him. Put aspirin paste on it. I shut down all my anger at him being gone. I listen to what happened. I don't say anything about it. I let him 
B. It doesn't make me anything. But he is aggressive. I'm not passive. I wouldn't describe myself as that kind. I'm kind. And he's aggressive. They don't fit. Shit went down. And I'm not taking abuse from any man. I'm not going to be with somebody I can't reason with. And when I'm being unreasonable, I would fully expect and be happy to take a little bit of a slap. I would. Because I'd rather be punched or hit in the face like a human than dragged across the floor like an animal. And this is a feminism issue for me. You're going to disrupt my life after promising me that you're different. You're going to say you're a man but not treat me like a woman. It's a feminism thing. I'd rather be punched in the face. Not every woman would, and I'd fully expect that men should hesitate. But when someone has an argumentative nature, and if she gets to the point of screaming, just slap her. Not if you can't control yourself. Don't. Don't hit women, you know? It's a by basis kind of thing. But I've been in plenty of relationships. Um, I don't think enough of them hit me back. But, you know, it kind of reminds me, I've been the cunt who couldn't control myself in one. That's fine. I gotta self-analyze at least a few times. Least. Anyway, so Chris was around the night I came back because I didn't want to be alone in this place. There's no intention of fucking him. Brought home another guy. I wasn't even intending on bringing Chris home, but then this other guy happened. He needed a place to crash. So I gave him my floor. Turns out he was a pathological liar, scam artist. Well, I don't fucking have anything in my name, so... <laughs> Didn't matter. So I brought them both home. The next day, I got mad at Chris. Tammy did the same thing, shoved him, kind of thing. I gave Chris my keys to go and get his shoes because we were on our way out. Because Chris is like that, right? That turned into more cops, as usual. They called the cops because I yelled at Rick. Fine. So I got a five day eviction notice. Chris isn't allowed back. Scotty isn't allowed back. But Scotty wasn't official because he took off. And I told Chris to take off, but he didn't. <laughs> Gotta give him loyalty. It's a quality. But it's just who forgets their shoes? <sighs> So that's where I stand right now. Somewhere between owning this place and not owning it for the next two weeks. Somewhere between capable of taking care of myself and fucking myself over. Somewhere between truly upholding things that I say that I'm going to and striving for the adventurous, unpredictable, artistic life on the other side of things. So that's 
on the whole thing so that I can be more political. You know, I'm going to give this the summer, you know, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, June, July, August, for the universe to give me the grand signs, which would be more fulfilling, which would be more respect, or which would I be more successful at, which would make me happier, or which would give me more impact. And, you know, th these things are not mutually exclusive, but they also can be opposing, weirdly. You know, it's all percentages when we get to the mutually exclusive, not mutually exclusive. It's a weird term. They either are or aren't mutually exclusive. If they aren't, then it's percentages. You know, how happy versus how much impact, um, how successful versus, what was the other thing I said? Um, not even versus, how much, how successful I am and how much impact I have. What I'm meant to do. So, between all of that, I want to uh, either join the military and work exclusively on becoming Prime Minister someday. Obviously this would have to go. Obviously I'd have to do my trip pretty fast. That would help, if anything help me be more encompassing, would help me meet more people, I already have a sort of campaign trail. <laughs> um, know people in every city, know cultures, see more things within my own country. Um, you know, the hiking, the actual hiking and living outside, be able to wear more. I already know I can take pain. I already know I can fight. I really can. <laughs> I wish that had been more fair. I wish he'd have been stronger. I wish I could have learned more, but I could. I could, and I will. Once I commit to something, there's no stopping me. Or there's the artistic side. I could do this, and I could write, and I could do music, and I could just be lavish and all over the place and be the other me, you know? This one is so intense. I wouldn't have to have tact. It was ridiculous as I want. Probably have more sex that way, but that doesn't really matter. Either way, I'm getting my tubes tied. Adopting is the only way I'm having kids. It's just better. I think if I were going to be political, that would be... No, nah, but you know what? I have to consider the targets, you know, things that people target. I think it is socially responsible and upholds my views if I, I don't. So anyway, that's where I'm at, choosing between my artistic and my logical. And according to most tests that I've taken, I have more logic than I do creativity. You know, I use one side more than the other. And those ones. <laughs> I know that instinctively. This side is the logical, and this one's the emotional. So. Pretty sure I'm going to aim for politics, but I'd like the universe to give me a sign. My popularity doesn't seem to be all that great on these things, so. We'll see. We shall see. Alright. As always, much love. I hope you are not having as unsteady and uncertain of a uh, <laughs> month as I am, but that's Gemini for you. And I hope, I hope you are aiming towards something better than what you've achieved thus far. Bye guys.